What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the newly released Adidas Yeezy 500 in the Soft Vision colorway. Before we jump into things, if you have not yet entered the giveaway for this pair of Air Jordan 4 Winters, make sure to do it because it's really easy to enter. All you have to do is subscribe to this channel, subscribe to my unboxing channel, follow me on both Instagram and on Twitter at RealSethFowler, and then comment the best social media handle to reach you on on the original review of this sneaker. And I know that sounds like a lot of steps, but all the information and links that you need are in the description below. So make sure to enter because this pair doesn't come out till I think December 2nd, so you'll be getting the sneaker mad early. But with this out of the way, let's move right into the soft vision Yeezy 500s. For like a year and a half, I couldn't stand the Yeezy 500. I thought it was ugly, I thought it looked like a bug, and to be fair, I still think those things, but um, now that I've worn a pair for a couple weeks, I love them. I think they're great. For me, the Yeezy 500 was one of those sneakers that I really had to warm up to. It was a shoe that, at first glance, I hated, and then at second, third, and fourth, and fifth glance, I still hated, but now, I like them. But as much as I love the Yeezy 500, I always felt like each colorway looked the same, except for the black colorway, but it's still kind of a boring colorway. So when I found out that Kanye and Adidas were releasing sort of a lavender colored one, I was into it. I was really excited about it. And now that I've got this sneaker in hand, I've got to say, I'm still into it. I still dig it. If you're trying to grab a pair of the Yeezy 500 Soft Visions, they drop today, November 2nd, for 200 bucks. And I would definitely recommend grabbing your pair from MrPorter.com, which is where I grabbed my pair, and I've also linked it down in the description below. But finally, jumping into the sneaker itself, the overall construction of this Yeezy 500 is pretty much identical to every other Yeezy 500. Unlike the upcoming Stone 500s or the High Top Slate 500s, this shoe remains the same as all the previous ones, and I think that's a good thing because they really did sort of change things up with just the colorway. And speaking of colorway, it's not exactly what I thought it was going to be. When I saw images online through Yeezy Mafia or Sneaker News or even Adidas themselves, I thought it was going to be a pink sneaker. But once I got it in hand, I realized it's more of like a really light purple or even lavender color. I definitely do not think that's a bad thing. In fact, I might actually prefer it because I can wear it with some of my Ravens gear, maybe. But um, it's different than what you would expect. And of course, being a sort of light muted color that could be either purple or pink, this shoe really does change the way that it looks in different lighting situations. When I was filming the on foot portion of this video, I really felt like this sneaker looked more pink because the sun was kind of coming down on it and really was washing out some of the purples. But then seeing it in the studio, it definitely has a much more purple vibe to it. And I think through the B-roll, you'll notice that the color of the sneaker does sort of seem to change. With all that said, if you do not like the way this sneaker looks in images online or even through this video, you're not gonna like it in person. It's still a pinkish purplish shoe, no matter what lighting situation you're in. But moving past the color of this sneaker onto the materials, I do have to say that just like all the previous 500s, the materials on this sneaker are excellent. To be fair, you are paying $200 for this shoe, so it's not a cheap shoe by any stretch of the imagination, but you are getting some pretty solid suede and some pretty premium feeling meshes that really make you feel like you didn't waste your money. As usual, you've got this nice big suede panel on the toe, you've got suede around the eyelets, and then underneath those panels, you've got some really thin skeletal leather panels, and of course, some puffy mesh. The tongue of the 500s remain the same, it's still a mesh tongue with this weird sort of leather figure eight going on on top of it. The laces come in a matching lavender, and that's another thing that I've gotta say about this sneaker. They did a really great job of color matching all the different materials, because a lot of times what people don't realize is that when you dye one material, it comes out a different shade than when you dye a different material. So for example, if you dyed a white suede in bright red, it would probably come out bright red. However, if you dyed a mesh in the same bright red dye, it might come out a different shade of red. And that's something I really love about this sneaker. Even with all these different materials, they all come out the same shade. Moving inside the sneaker, you've got this nice lavender colored sock liner. The insole of the shoe also comes in lavender. It's also got the Adidas, Yeezy, and Ortholite branding printed on the heel in black. As for sizing, the Yeezy 500 Soft Vision fits just like every other pair of Yeezy 500s. For me, that's true to size. For you, it might be something different, but as I always suggest, if you have the chance to try the shoe on first or any other colorway of Yeezy 500s, definitely do that to make sure you're grabbing the right size for you. And if you've never tried on a pair of 500s before, comfort-wise, you're going to be really impressed. It's a super plush upper, and the midsole, while not boost, is still pretty soft underfoot. Continuing back on the sneaker, you've got more padded meshes, you've got some leathers, and of course you've got this rubber mud guard that separates the upper from the midsole. And then just like the rest of the sneaker, around back, you've got more mesh, more leather, and more suede. Moving down on the sneaker, you've got that standard Yeezy 500 Addy Print midsole, which I believe was taken from an Adidas basketball sneaker from the 80s or 90s. It's still a super organic midsole, it's still just as comfortable as it was before, and it still makes the entire shoe 
look even more bug-like than just the upper does. And then finally, on the bottom of the sneaker, you've got this gum-colored outsole. I'm gonna be honest, at first, I really love this outsole because I felt like gum outsoles always make sneakers look better, but when I saw this shoe in hand and realized that this upper is more purple than more pink, this shoe really reminds me of peanut butter and jelly now, and I kind of wish they had made the entire sneaker lavender rather than lavender and gum. In my head, it just looks like a peanut butter and jelly Yeezy, and now I just can't unsee it. The Yeezy 500 Soft Vision is finally the departure that we've been wanting from those tan colorways in the 500s. It might not be the exact colorway that everyone wanted, but at least it's different. Even though I'm now gonna nickname these my PB&J Yeezys, I still really like the color and I like the fact that now I have something different in my collection, at least Yeezy-wise. The Yeezy 500 Soft Vision is a super comfortable shoe and if you've never owned a pair of 500s or you just love this colorway, this is definitely a good sneaker to pick up. But now I would love to know your thoughts on the Yeezy 500 Soft Visions and whether you grab the pair for yourself or whether you let these guys go. So let me know in the comment section down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all in the next one.